Hi, everybody. Um, I am Adam Evan Engel. Um, I actually went to BU, so uh, I'm talking about putting the social and social media building community through blogging. My info is right there. You'll be able to find this PowerPoint somewhere on my website at the end of this. Um, www.adamsmasher.me. I'll probably just put up a blog post or something. Um, and I encourage you also to tweet hopefully nice things about me during this um, because I haven't really done this before. So, let's get started. Uh, a quick disclaimer. Uh, now, I love Twitter. I love Facebook. This isn't really about that. Um, so, I'm sorry. You guys can stay. I really hope you do because it's still going to be fun. Um, yeah, I'm going to take you guys on a journey. All right, so if you were a pizza topping, what would you be and why? Don't answer this question yet. Think about it in your mind and uh, we're gonna come back to it in about five minutes. Just keep that in your mind. I'm really surprised I'm supposed to have like a footer and everything. Oh well, all right. So, oh there it is. Um, I am the former editor of BU Culture Shock, which is uh, the official blog of BU's Howard Thurman Center. Uh, contrary to popular belief, this logo is not uh, modeled after me. We look <laughs> nothing alike. Um, so that said, uh, we are the official blog. We were founded about two and a half years ago, uh, officially created. Uh, our first birthday was uh, February of 2010. So we've been uh, live for two and a half years. We've been featured on uh, Boston O. We were featured in the Washington Post once. Uh, for some reason, people like us. So I encourage you to check us out, and we'll be talking. I'll be talking about it. So here's how my, my talk is going to work. First off, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, here's how we're going to work. First off, we're not going to be getting that technical. Uh, so HTML, CSS, PHP. Python, Java, whatever you want to talk about, you don't need, we don't need to talk about it here because WordPress is freaking awesome and is really easy to use. So kudos, WordPress Foundation. Uh, I'm going to start off by telling you about what we did. And then uh, I'm going to talk about what you can do. And finally, we're going to end, off, we're going to end with a video and then a Q&A if you guys have any questions or if you have any answers. Um, so, why a blog? Uh, a blog is about four things, as I've discovered. It's about ideas. It's about communication. It's about expression, and hopefully, it's about dialogue. Iced. I made that up last night. Um, so, that's, that's the idea behind it, is, is that you can have all these ideas. All these people can come together and create something really, really cool by writing to each other about things for the general public. So check it. Before we get into the why and the how of culture shock, let's jump back to that question. If you were a pizza topping, what would you be and why? Turn to your neighbors. Get into groups of like five or six people and talk about it. Introduce yourselves to one another and talk about your pizza topping. All right, uh, I'll give you guys about five minutes and go. What pizza topping would you be? Anybody want to share? Sun-dried tomatoes. So sun-dried tomatoes. Why sun-dried tomatoes? Because they have so much flavor, and the longer you have them in your mouth, the more flavor you get. I like that. All right, let's get uh, one or two more. Anybody? I will be a greasy and spicy. All right. All right. Uh, how about one more? Pineapple. Why pineapple? Because it's pineapple and it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pineapple indeed. Um, I said I would be feta cheese because I like to bring a Mediterranean flavor to anything I do. And feta cheese, you don't realize how good it is until you try it. And it's incredible on a pizza, let me tell you. All right. So moving on. Uh, some more history on Culture Shock. When we started, we were at about 15 writers. Uh, at this point, uh, now that I've graduated, uh, we're at 35. We've, we've expanded considerably in those couple of years, uh, which just goes to show the value that a community can give to a, to a multi-user blog. 
Uh, the idea of Culture Shock was pretty simple, bringing people together through a shared purpose. The blog was a tool that was used to unite a group. So, uh, you know, the, the writing core that we have, the 35 person writing core that we're at right now, has people from, not only from, you know, uh, uh, from Massachusetts, but you know, we have people from, from Jersey, from Cali, from uh, Philly, from Boston, we have people actually even from uh, across the ocean and from uh, South America. So it's in a, in a 20,000 person undergraduate community, in such a big undergraduate community, uh, you wouldn't normally expect to have something like that, which is why it's, it's really cool that this, that this worked out as it did. Uh, because you know, in, in a big community, they're not gonna hand stuff to you. They're not gonna hand you uh, a group of friends or something. You're gonna have to find it, and, and uh, this is a very diverse group that we found, and this is a very diverse group that you can create. <coughs> so why did we come together? It's because we like to write. It's pretty simple. Um, but how do we create you know, a community this awesome? There are actually a few of the people in this picture are actually here. Do you guys wanna raise your hands or something? <laughs> They're over there. Uh, and he, Neil over there also, uh, was one of the founders. Uh, so yeah, so there's, there's actually some culture shock representation here today, which goes to show you the value of this community, um, that people are supporting one another. But how do we create it? It's why I'm standing in front of you, isn't it? Um, you know, we're, we're turning a relationship out of we're bringing it out of cyberspace and we're bringing it into meat space, if you will. Uh, now for just a few technical details. I promised you guys no, no programming, but just some things so you guys can establish your own if you so desire. We're running a self-hosted multi-user WordPress installation. Uh, this is our, the first page of our user list. Uh, potential writers submit, our, uh, submit, submit sample posts, something that, make, that will make you think. Uh, sometimes it'll make you chuckle, sometimes it'll make you think about yourself, about politics, some, maybe some combination of them. But if the, uh, if, if the people running it like it, they'll bring, they'll bring the writer on. And uh, yeah, so all of our writers are currently in the system, whether they graduated, whether they left uh, uh, for some other reason, or if they're still active in the community, they're still in the system because um, uh, submissions are encouraged even from alumni. Uh, it's, it's a great way to, to facilitate that connection between uh, past and present students. Uh, and yeah, it's a really cool thing. Now the beauty of WordPress is just that it's so simple. Really, um, there's pretty much no tech stuff going on. This is, my, this is the front page of the site. It's Barack Obama holding up an iPad. Um, it's talking about how uh, the, the Dewey defeats Truman. It was like when CNN messed up and said that the healthcare bill was, was nixed. Um, someone wrote a post on it, because people write posts about everything. Um, all right, so you don't really, we don't even really need to train the writers, uh, and that's the beauty. Now, going on to actually creating this community, as opposed to talking about all this stuff. It's really not that hard to get people onto a multi-user blog. People who are writing from across the country, you can get them onto a WordPress blog and have them all contributing. But it's very different to get them into the same room. It's a very different feel once they actually know each other, once they can see each other's faces and can actually share ideas in, in their own, in a room together. Um, so how did we do it? We started off, well, the first thing that we did was we have weekly meetings. Uh, in those weekly meetings, there's theoretically a structure. In reality, when you get 20 people in a room, let's be honest, it doesn't work. But the structure is, you start off with a weekly question like the pizza topping question. So you guys are actually part of this. Um, we talk about analytics, we talk about, we use Google Analytics, and we talk about how, uh, how the posts that have gone up have, have affected it, who saw which post, which are the most viewed posts, that sort of thing. It gives kind of a competitive nature, but also a collaborative nature. It's kind of fun. Uh, we share post ideas with one another. We're opening each other up to new ideas that we may have never thought of before. And finally, we'll have, we sometimes end off with a closing video if we have time. Now, the benefits of it are, are 
there's, there's a bunch of them, you know. So it's an open space in, in a meeting like that. When everybody is trying to write, when everybody's trying to think of their own ideas, um, they end up sharing ideas. Some people might have a perspective that, that fits better for something. Um, and that's, that's, you know, you can pass off ideas to one another and somebody will write something you've never thought possible. That goes with idea generation as well and ultimately it boils down to having more content. The more, the more stuff that goes up, the more likely you are to be seen. People are encouraged to, to work together and to promote each other's stuff because if they know one another, they're going to support one another. Unless they hate one another, in which case, whole other problem. Um, and there's a picture of one weekly meeting. Kind of. But there's more! We all, there, are also, there are also events that go on in the community that, that you, can, you can build the community within the community. Uh, have people go to the same event together. Something like BU hosts a dance marathon. So if you get a few writers together and go to this thing, suddenly those writers know each other better. Suddenly, suddenly they're more apt to contribute both, both to a meeting and to a post. You know, they'll submit, they'll submit, their, they'll share those, those ideas online as willingly as they will in a meeting. Um, and with promotion as well, if you're working together, you're gonna want to get other people involved. So, you know, teamwork and shared goals, they ultimately will lead to a stronger community, we hope. Now, it's not worth it to talk about all this stuff without actually talking about the results, about what actually happens as, as you know, because of this, this, this uh, focus on community building. So in the raw numbers, you can see, like I said, we use analytics. Um, over there is just, I, I had a hover over. Um, our, the record number of hits that we had was back in April when we hit 20,000, which keep in mind, we started off when we were lucky to get 1,000 a month. So, uh, you know, you can, see, you can see how much it bumps up uh, over a couple of years. There's also uh, one of our kind of fun stories was that as part of this community, uh, there was one day in, I think it was April 30th of 2011, where we realized that we were 500 hits away from 8,000, which would have broken a record. So, we, so all the writers were spammed, all the writers were told of this, and within four hours, we got those 500 visits. We got those 500 more people seeing the blog. We hit 8,000 for the first time, and we've never looked back. There's also a global reach. You can get people from across the globe to come see your blog, because everybody has their own perspective, and somebody's, somebody's idea may resonate better with somebody in China than yours, or someone, you know, somebody writing about anime may, may uh, be very well read in Japan, but not have anybody in Cambodia, I don't know. Um, we're missing, you know, at this point, wow, you really can't see that. Wow, okay. Um, there, are about, there are about 10 countries that we're missing, including, as I discovered today, North Korea. Somehow we've broken through the Great Firewall of China, but North Korea doesn't like us. Don't know why that is. They don't have computers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a possibility. Uh, and ultimately there's a wide range of content that goes up, because when people are sharing ideas, uh, everybody's inspired to do their own thing. So that's, that's a word cloud, you know. <clears throat> Clearly, as much as people promote their own names and talk about BU and chimichangas, uh, and community. Also, a lot of college students like to write about sex. Let's be real. <laughs> now, because this community has, has grown so well, it's, it's been successful, I'd like to say. Uh, we were even featured in, on BU's front page. This, is, this just is a testament to the fact that, that the community that has been built is a very strong one that people know about, and it resonates in, in the greater university community. And that's something that can be translated easily to, to any community. If you have a group of people who are working together, and they're doing stuff not only to better themselves, and not only to better the group, but to actually you know, join into the, better, to the, to the greater community, and to actually better the, the group as a whole, people are gonna notice you. You're gonna get, you're gonna get read, you're gonna get seen, and People are going to like you because you're a good person. So now the take home message is actually pretty simple. Writing brings people together. People are inspired by one another. People are inspired by the written word. 
the blog ultimately is almost incidental to the project because, because the blog is what gets people into the room. Uh, that's where the community building happens. So uh, the, content, the, the content is great and the blog is great, but building the community happens, happens through the blog. It doesn't happen just on the blog. So now we're going to end things with a video. Woohoo! Uh, the first semester that we were on, that we, were, that we were running, we had a feature that was called Come On Be You. This was, this was a video series. I can see Neil's actually, he has his head down now. Um, <laughs> this, was a, this was a video series that got started, uh, and it actually, it was a hit across campus. Uh, it, was, it took a critical look at what was, at things that happened on the BU community, and we just kind of made fun of it. Um, not, not really. It was critical, but it was, but it was constructive for the most part. So, um, I actually got permission from a meta med who, who is in the video. He recommended this one. So, let's, uh, it's also the most popular one we had. So, how about we watch it? Ladies and gentlemen, we're back for, come on, now this week, we're talking about food. As you know, this week the dining halls released their annual survey. This is where they take a step back and evaluate strengths, weaknesses, and areas that they may need to improve on, coming straight from the Boston University students. We here at Come On BU did our own research, and this is what we dug up. The Super Secret BU Cookbook, the all-encompassing guide to how to run an effective Boston University dining hall. Inside we find the proposed menu, where of course we have Meatloaf Mondays, Spicy Meatloaf Tuesdays, Turkey Meatloaf Wednesdays, we go ethnic on Thursdays for Portuguese meatloaf. And on Friday, of course, we spin a globe, pick a country, and insert the random name, meatloaf. Also included in this super secret BU cookbook, the 10 dining hall commandments. We're inside, we find the rules and credentials for how it is we determine by dining here at Boston University. Commandment one, on the first commandment, thou shalt refrain from any and all types of flavoring and or seasoning. We like playing here at Boston University United, and that's where we're going to keep The second commandment, thou shalt resort to tofu in time for need. If you're crunch and don't know what to cook, just add tofu to any other random dish. And also don't use a vegan special. Thou shalt wait extra long to prepare food and place it out when individuals are waiting. It makes no sense, but we're going to do it anyway. If you're in line, I'm probably going to leave. Thou shalt ensure the adequate supply of pork knives and all of the utensils which students need to eat their food. I don't know why, I'm just going to do it anyway. Thou shalt put away food at least 30 minutes prior to dining hall actually closing. If you show up at 7.30, you're probably going to leave hungry. I'm just saying. Thou shalt mislabel all menu items for the explicit purpose of student confusion. If you stand in line because you want lasagna, and the sign says lasagna, you're probably going to get chicken nuggets. <laughs> Bostonia. I do two blogs called Outside In, written by the Uncommon Bostonian, and the second one's called Uncommon Bostonian, and 
I'm wondering, just me, I'm just the person who's writing those two blogs, so how do I build up a community? I've been running these blogs for a few years. One's seven years old, and the other one will be five next month. Um, well, are you, you're trying to build a community like with with other writers, or just Just me. Um, well, you know, I write about Asperger's Syndrome. That's, that's what I have. I have non-verbal learning disorder, sleep apnea. And I write about, on the first blog, about the latest news about Asperger's and autism. And I also write about pop culture, because I always wanted to be an entertainment reporter, so I just do entertainment reports a little bit on the outside end. I'm kind of I'm a little bit more serious, right, about some breaking news in Boston or in the world or opinions about stuff, anti-bullying, because um, I was bullied as a kid and I didn't want to, you know, tell people I survived it and how I did it and, you know, stuff like that. And, um, you know, my most re one of my recent posts a few weeks ago got a lot of hits about um, WOVS becoming Amp FM, which is not a good station now. <laughs> And I got a lot of hits, but, you know, how can I maintain out those high numbers? Not as high as yours, but they were pretty high. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you don't have 35 people writing for you, so yeah. <laughs> you don't need that much. Um, so, are you, how are you, like, interacting with other, with other writers? Do you have that connection well, at all? I, I belong to a writers group called Writers Anonymous, and we put out a book last year called Seven at the Sevens. Seven Word Memoirs. <laughs> And I encourage my fellow writers to look at my blogs. But right now we're trying to promote the book. We recently had an interview on NPR about our book a couple weeks ago. Um, how about other other promotion sort of things? Are you doing? Do you have other promotion um, methods? Well, Be just go come to events and tell them about my blogs. I go to um, you know the Boston Media Makers and hand out my business cards. I'm out of business cards right now. You know. Because, I mean, honestly... And I, and I also post the blogs. The blog posts show up on Facebook and Twitter. Because, really, um, those, are, those are some communities that actually would have, you know, would be able to back you if you got some traction. So, uh, I think that the best thing that you can do is just, is just network, network with people in those communities. Um, network with people in, in the Asperger's community. Because if, you know, oh, yeah, I'm by, I belong to the Asperger's Association of New England. Are you trying to get a, ask a question, Antonio? Yeah. Okay, I'll move out of the way. Oh. It's right here. Right there. So I guess to, to add to the answer to the question is I, I try to follow people on Twitter who follow, who other people who are doing the same thing are following and build a community that, build a connections that way too. And my question to you, Adam, is ooh, Google Analytics seems to do the job pretty well for, for stats. Mm -hmm. And we have even here several vendors who offer free stats for, for the blog sites. And how helpful is it to have different metrics from different places to compare to one another? Can it be a point where there's too much metricing? No, I mean, every, every one has their own their own benefit. For example, um, you know, Google Analytics is what Culture Shock uses for the most part. But uh, Jetpack is also built in. So so Jetpack is used for and the WordPress.com stats were self-hosted, but the the statistics still are still go on. So you know, if you can see from multiple sources, every each one might have its own its own um, specialty. So you know, Jetpack doesn't have a map. That a map from you know of each country that is seen uh, that is seen your blog. Uh, it doesn't have necessarily, uh, but on the other hand, on the other hand, Jetpack does break it down by time. So you know there is there is a benefit to each one. You can see when when you're most heavily trafficked using Jetpack, and I'm sure using some of the other some of the other the other uh, analytics uh, devices and and um, software that's used. But you know, Google Analytics is just what we started off with, and for the most part, it does the trick. Anything else? Um, when you first started the site, how did you originally get people to be interested in writing for you? Did people just come to you, or did you kind of do an outreach? Because I run a blog for um, a nonprofit in New Orleans for just it's like Oak Street, it's just a street in New Orleans with a bunch of businesses. 
So it's a much smaller community than, say, BU, for example. So I've kind of found it difficult to bring writers on. Well, you know, it started off, I was brought in through outreach. You know, it was an email that was, that was first sent out. And, and really, it, it started off as just, as just an email blurb. And then once the website is up, people start reading the website. And even more than that, if you, once you start talking to people and you can show them, you can show them this blog, as I'm sure that you have, um, if on, on Oak, Oak Street, right? Yeah. So have you just gone to the businesses and said, hey, we want, we want posts? You know, we're looking for writers? Um, or, yes. <laughs> yeah. What's I the, think it's just such a small community that people are kind of busy with their own businesses and don't necessarily think they have the time right. to commit to something. Well, then, you know, don't, don't tell them to commit to a daily post right. or a weekly post. Say, say, you know, we want one post from you. Say, we want, we want to get your input. And, you know, you get them started with one post and they find that it's not a 16-hour-a-day commitment. It's a, you know... It's half an hour to, to write something uh, that, that benefits that Oak Street community. So pitch it, pitch it to them like that, and maybe you'll find more interest. Okay. I, I think it takes a little bit more than a, I guess, blog. Right. And I was asked to do it. Mm -hmm. And I was so flattered that they asked me to guess the blog. So sending an email to people you know, that you look at their other people's blogs, you go to the community of someone that's writing Send them an email and ask them and flatter them. <laughs> and then they might guess blog. But it takes more than me more than half an hour to write blog for my guest blog. Well yeah, you know, but it, <laughs> but it's not but it's not gonna take you a, you know a day of work. No, and I do it like once every eight weeks, that's all I'll commit. Yeah. So, so I get them to commit. Yep. So one thing that I think I missed here this weekend was monetizing blogging. And I've heard somewhere, I don't know if it was a school of podcasting or somewhere like that, that uh, if you're blogging for, say, a company, a nonprofit corporation, you could charge around $100 a week for two or three posts of 250 words length. I mean, what, what do people, what do you see, Adam, as a... Benchmark for that, for uh, for monetizing, monetizing like get, yeah, getting people like paying people to write posts is what is that what you're asking? People paying me to write posts. People paying you, uh, you know, because we're we're run out of the school. We've had we've actually had that offer before, but mostly from not not people like offering to guest post, but people basically spamming everybody. Somebody who said who said I write about nursing homes and I want to submit a post to Culture Shock. Um, I mean, if you're writing for an 18 to 22 age group, you're not going to talk about nursing homes. I'm sorry. Um, we've had we've had the offer. I think that I mean, you said you said 100 to 150. If it's if it's a personal blog or if it's if it's something big, um, it, it scales obviously depending on on who's seeing it. So, you know, I would say I would say if you're getting maybe 50 hits a week, then then, I mean. Let them let them volunteer at first and see what happens. Because if there's a notable spike, a very noticeable spike to your blog, then it will be more beneficial for everybody involved. I think if if you um, if you invited them in rather than rather than charging them, uh, because then they may be dissuaded from from coming back. You know what I'm saying? All right. Nobody else. Have fun, there's a snack session. <laughs>